It's the Central Weekly, a weekly podcast from the Central Podcast Network. You've got Mr. John Henninger and Mr. Jared Lacrone. Hey, guess what? Episode 82 of the Central Weekly. That's right. 82 episodes of the Central Weekly. Wow. Fall is, it's fall now, right? September. We're filming well, this September Well, it's not on the 20th. day that we're recording it, but it will be on the day that you listen to it. The 24th? So today is, is the, the first second. I believe the twenty third is the first day of oh, fall. Okay, well there you go. Happy fall, y'all. Speaking of, Nathaniel Garner is, is calling me at this very moment. Nathaniel texted me this Cardinals. morning and said, "Today's the last day of fall." Look at that. Yeah, look at that. I love Nathaniel. We got to get Nathaniel on the podcast. Maybe we can have him do a voice memo. That would be fun. How long do you think that voice memo would be? Uh, I don't. Know. It's hard to say. We'll, he, yeah, he's hard to sometimes say. short and quick, especially when he in the lobby. He's short. And he just says "Cubs lost." Yeah, <laughs> and then he moves on. Sometimes he likes to talk more. But this is a good way to start the episode. Yeah, right. <laughs> hey, guess Perfect. what? We're talking about feet this weekend uh-huh. with the Body of Believers Week Three uh-huh. of the Central Weekly. Here we are. Uh, I was talking to somebody about the Central Weekly. They said, "Hey, you do. You guys do a good job of staying on topic." I was like, "Wow, you you've I, not listened to the Central <laughs> Weekly." <laughs> I mean, they said when they the, the podcast they listen to, they stay off, they go off topic and they stay off topic. Wow! Then it, it really <laughs> begs the question: What is the topic? You yeah, know what I mean, like perhaps the topic is is you know, off okay. topic. Well, we're going to talk feet, ten toes, ten feet. Okay, let's talk first and foremost. Feet are disgusting. It's, I, it's, that I don't I don't think they're they're pretty. Mm-hmm. At least my feet. Okay. And my mom, I'm going to call her out. She mm-hmm. doesn't have pretty feet either. Okay. All right. <laughs> and, and the reason let's I talk say about this, our mom's feet. <laughs> Speaking reason, of topic. The reason I say this is I just remember always, I remember vivid, vividly her cutting her toenails mm. on the bed, like at bedtime. And just, <sighs> I just remember that it just wasn't. Yikers. Yeah. And we both have very long toes. And uh, my girls have inherited my long toes. Yeah, you do have long toes. Maria has these cute little little feet. She, she takes them after her mom. Uh-huh. They're just, if you're going to get cute feet, Maria's got them. Oh. This is weird already. <laughs> it does feel weird. <laughs> but but uh, anyways, feet. We're going to talk uh-huh. about them. I love this sermon, John Hinninger. Really? I really do. I didn't think I was. <laughs> <laughs> I always give back kind of Good. compliments. Good. But it's a, it's a, I said, like you, it's just, I didn't expect the ending mm-hmm. to come back to the white lotus, golden mm-hmm. lotus. Golden What's lotus? a white lotus? Yeah, I don't know. It's don't a flower, know. right? Yeah. Um, but I didn't, I, I knew because you just, you talked about it briefly and I thought that's a great thing, but then uh, you hit it hard at the end and I think that's where y- your heart gripper mm. is right there. Well, uh, I mean, it's, uh, I can't truly, I, I can take credit only as the vessel, seriously, mm-hmm. because I believe that yeah. God uh, kind of led me in that direction um, creatively, mentally, and, um, but I think that the parallel is unmissable. Yeah. Yeah, and here's the funny thing. Uh, we uh, Eric was a uh, big, big shout out to Eric Lyday for sitting in last week because it was a crazy week. We had on the CA we had the Belonging Company conference, so we just didn't get a chance to, for you and I to sit right. down. We were going to try. We had a variety of ways. I brought the microphones, and we were going to try to do it like in the van. Mm. Uh, it just wasn't going to work. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but anyways, it was okay. So here's the, here's the compliment. You ready for it? Okay. Um, w- the best thing about Belonging Company you would think was the worship. It wasn't. Mm. It was the speakers. Mm. They made the word. For, just come alive and like yeah. uh, you, you, I always I, I sometimes give people at least in my head a hard time when you're constantly going wow mm. wow they're right next to you mm, wow come on now you get a lot of those right I, I, that distracts me a little bit uh-huh. but gosh I was the guy doing that mm. this this at this conference and it's funny because everybody that says what was your best thing about it it was falling more in love with the word of God mm. and I think if you're going to go to a conference that's what you need so the reason I bring sure, that up is yeah. because you... this weekend I just the way you projected God's word and brought this out in the, from the scriptures mm-hmm. um, was just so compelling, and it just mm-hmm. leaned in. Just like those speakers, I felt like. I just felt that again this weekend, so mm-hmm. it was just good stuff. Well, praise God. Um, but the, you did not start out in an awesome moment at the beginning. No shirt, no shoes, no service. Right. I mean, isn't that <laughs> – I mean, like, I don't know. Really, until like just a couple of weeks ago, standing at McDonald's in Branson, I've always thought like, who's walking into these restaurants without shoes on? You know, like, and then like my kids will kick off shoes. And I'm like, you guys, yeah. put your shoes on or you're, you're going to get, get kicked out. out of here, right? But I mean, like this dude walks in. I don't know if he had ever worn short sure, shoes. <laughs> um, I mean, just from the condition of his feet, I would say this is just generally a this shoeless man. In Branson. Uh-huh. And he... Mm-hmm. Uh, I, thought, I mean, we live in Southern Illinois, so there have been many times where we've seen people in a gas station. Sure. You know, sometimes a restaurant, depending on the choosing, with no shirt on. Right. Uh, they're not. 
But shoes, I just think another is another thing. Especially, we're weird. We're both at the same thing. We take both of our families take their shoes off at the front door. Yeah, right. And that I think it's a germ thing for both of us. Mm-hmm. It's not like a, we're talking some Asian culture stuff. Right. In your lesson <laughs> later on, I think that's an Asian culture thing. But it's also a Lacrone Henninger thing. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> um, I, I'll I get chastised yep. uh, uh-huh. often for just I was like oh, I'm just gonna walk to the kitchen real quick my nope. shoes on mm. nope we've been so we've been moving out and uh-huh. you know things have been a little different so there have been times where I've had my shoes on when I'm getting some furniture to uh-huh. take out to, sure. to move and I feel creepy doing that it, it does just feel like, out of way out of just, place yeah and then when and people like can see my face when they wear shoes inside uh-huh. I'm not gonna tell them I'm just not that guy but I will probably show it with my face Ooh, are you gonna take your, can you yeah. take your shoes off? I've said that to my mom. Hey, Have can, you really? Can you take your shoes off? Because <laughs> she why, just forgets. Why is Jared gagging? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so, but your first thing was, as the foot goes, so goes the body. Right. Captain Obvious, first point. Right. But I love this first point because it's, because you said this was kind of your first thing about like um, where the body goes, the foot goes first. You know, that's what takes the body. It's impossible for the yes. body to go somewhere that yeah. the foot isn't. Yeah. You know, I mean, like your foot can't go one direction, your body goes the other. Yeah. So that that's the that's the parallel with the body of believers, mm-hmm. right? I mean, we have this base, mm-hmm. and uh, as goes the base, goes the body. Yeah, yeah. And I think, um, number one, your two functions of the feet. Good job again, preacher man. Five last Five yeah. fingers, two mm-hmm. feet. And yeah. actually, Jared, you weren't there on the Thursday run-through, but that was a suggested addition from oh, someone. Uh, I James McKenzie? Uh, possibly. I bet it was. I can't remember. I think it was James. <laughs> but number one, feet feet that stabilize the body. And this is when you got into the volunteer base. Mm-hmm. Um, so let's talk about some numbers here. Kay. You threw out a lot of numbers right there. Sure. 400 more people or 20% Roughly. on site mm-hmm. in the last two years. Right. That's super cool. Yeah, praise God. Super cool. And then you said 300 plus are in Kid Depot every weekend. Kids, right. That's crazy. Yeah. We were, uh, we've been talking to some other people from uh, some other churches because of the whole you know multi-site thing. And... That's a big number for a church our size. For mm-hmm. our percentage of what, maybe two thousand on site, roughly. Okay. Where I think we're at maybe twenty one is right. our average. Yep. But to have three hundred of those be kids, yep. that's a big percentage. Yeah. Um, but then you said two hundred and eighty current volunteers. Right. So when you said that number was for the whole church on yep. the weekend to Correct. get things rolling. Across the and ministries. then hundred of those are your volu- kid people volunteers. Right. And again, without a doubt, we need double that. Yeah. To make this to make this work, and growing pains is a good thing. I mean, that's a number. You know, I mean, two hundred eighty volunteers across all of our ministries mm-hmm. is, is a good number. Yeah, um, it was a good number two years ago. Yep. yep. But yep. The, the hopefully the the message that's being drawn drawn yep. home there is you know as the body grows, mm-hmm. the the base needs to grow as well. Yeah, um, and we're, and that's the thing. We, I mean, on our staff, we're we're growing with our Kid Depot team. We've kind of restructured a little bit some things there mm-hmm. to grow the body in that way. Just just to be a little more targeted. Uh, so I know Phoebe's you know still involved in AMRA, and then we brought in Katie Newell mm-hmm. to help out, and then under them they've got some weekend help and some part time help because mm-hmm. I think you just need a structure of people that are especially in Kid Depot, that are in it to win it yeah. um, and consistent. Mm-hmm. Kids need consistency. Um, I think that brings a lot. And we were talking with another another one of those guys from the multi-site, and he said, because we're in the numbers game right here, after COVID, the num- the biggest, you probably know this, the biggest group of people coming back to church are young families. Mm-hmm. They're beating the boomers, which is crazy to think of. Right. The boomers are a little slow getting back after COVID, but the, but the, the young families want their kids to be in something because yeah. they were lacking that for so long. Sure. Um, so that's why I think Central has just come alongside a lot of these young families and saying, I mean, not only is this a great place to hang out on the weekend, but it's something that they're inspiring the parents to also be those disciple makers mm-hmm. in their kid's life because they have to be the number one. Sure. So. Yeah. Okay. Done with the numbers? Back to sure. the feet. Volunteers, feet stabilize the body. Mm-hmm. Number two. Good job. Feet, mo- <laughs> feet mean, the- mobilize the body. Yeah, f- Right. I like this point a lot. Okay. And your shoes, your your lighting shoes thing was super good. I, I mean, like it's it's uh, you know, I'm a Shark Tank guy, mm-hmm. and I mean, just okay. I, uh, let's stop there. Okay, when you say the two things that you watch right. are Cardinals baseball and Shark Tank, right. that is literally no lie. I don't. <laughs> I, you have right. the office on, but that's uh, not you. That's Sarah. No, that's Sarah. But that's it, right? I mean, really, when yeah. I'm watching TV. <laughs> 
it's really, I mean, that's that's what it's going to be. Yeah. <laughs> and Shark Tank has been on so long, you're kind of, oh, yeah, I forgot about that product. I mean, right? you see reruns. seriously. Yeah. And then so. it's always, you can always look them up and yeah. see where they are today. Yeah. And, Number, yeah. do you yeah. have any Shark Tank um, things in your home? Oh, for sure. I mean, so do you, Scrub Daddy. Yes. Anything um, else? Yeah. Uh, pff, hold up. Uh, the, uh, the Lola Cup. Lala cup. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. Haven has a Lala Haven cup. Has, yeah. That's a, a Shark Tank That's a thing. Shark Tank thing. Um, I can't remember anymore off the top of my head. You you should you should be like a Shark Tank guy. Like you should have those products. You should you know test them out with your family. And- I'm gonna. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to Bed Bath and Beyond. Uh huh. I'm just kidding. Nope. No, you're not. <laughs> that was the perfect avenue for oh, Shark Tank. For sure. But anyways, okay. F- you were talking. The f- the story with there with uh, the purpose of every state, that the product. Uh, yeah, it's really, I mean, even as you're sitting there watching Shark Tank on your couch, watching MSNBC or whatever, mm-hmm. watching a rerun of Shark mm-hmm. Tank, you know, it's hard to miss the, um, I guess it's, it's hard to miss the imagery of an actual light being mm-hmm. clipped to your foot. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, this is uh, this is what God says that the Scripture does. You know, I mean, it's a light to your path, uh, mm-hmm. the lamp to guide your feet. Um, and so, there's not a lot of uh, extraneous light. It's yeah. just light that is specifically concentrated at the foot of the person. And yeah. um, so with every step, more of the path is revealed. And you can stand there. Mm, I don't say this in the sermon, but I'm mm-hmm. going to say it now. You can stand there, mm-hmm. and as you stand, the light only reaches so far. You only see so mm-hmm. much. It requires you to take another step to see more of the path. The light is there on your foot, but mm-hmm. as you step, more of the path is revealed. Yeah, I love that. I think what you said is hold it to the light of Scripture, Yeah, because um, that's going to illuminate your path. Because right. a lot of times, too, we don't need to know we don't know what step to take because we're not in Scripture. Um, so I think that's going to reveal a lot of those things that we need to be moving towards or sure. moving away from sure. in a lot of aspects. Mm-hmm. It's funny that you say that because now we've, we, you know, we're moving. And so the girls are in the, it's for various reasons, long story short, the girls are in the sleeping in the living room. Oh. So when I get up in the morning to go to the, sc- the school bus, I have to tiptoe and I try not to turn on a lot of lights. Okay. And you are so right that my steps are so careful and small mm-hmm. and not as hurried uh-huh. because I don't can't see very well. Dude, I've walked through the worship center in the dark <laughs> oh, so many times. That is pitch black. Yeah, it's so black. And you think, well, I know the path. Mm, no, nope. no, it's tough. Even when you get out your flashlight on your phone, which you have probably done many right. times, it's not that bright. Like no. you would think that's just gonna light up the whole room, but yep. you've got that little thing. No. Um, but yeah, it's a good illustration. And I really hope that people take that to heart. Where like they, if, if they're struggling, maybe they're struggling because they need to be in the word more. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I know from my own point of view, there's been times where I'm like, oh, what's God, you know, want from me? What, you know, what's this calling? Or why am I struggling in this area with this sin still? It's like, no, because you're not putting in the light of scripture. Yeah. Because we are called to to put that light. Hey, Nate Carter calling. Nate Carter's called. I feel like he's called during the podcast has before. before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so you kind of wrap that up. You almost take a breath. Mentally, physically, spiritually in the okay. sermon. Okay. And then I don't want to say you take a hard turn. That's what I wrote down, hard turn. But you bring up the feet again. Yeah. And you showed one of the, a, a picture that literally had my mouth drop because, mm. again, I'm not a foot person. Mm-hmm. But to see the golden lotus, lotus feet yeah. and to see that the pinky toe mm-hmm. literally just stuffed up under on the foot. Yep. Um, and then you're just talking about the heel and the sole together and just the cripples the feet. And then... It just it was a good it was a good illustration I think will stay with people for a long time. Mm. I mean I, I hope so. Like the the big point there for me is that a lot of this like the the binding that mm-hmm. kept the foot from growing yeah. was done in the name of beauty. Yeah. Like pitched to them mm-hmm. as though this is the path to a better life yep. and a better marriage. And obviously, so we continued from there and just talked about how there is an enemy mm-hmm. actively binding the base of the church. And telling you this is what's best for you. And mm-hmm. it does it mm-hmm. exactly by by, yeah. by pitching that this is for yeah. this is for your best. You don't actually have the time mm-hmm. to do this. It's for your I mean, you you got enough God in your life. Mm-hmm. Just just spiritually stay where you are. Yeah. I mean, you're better off by by not growing. Yeah. Um but it's it, it is a binding mindset mm-hmm. because I mean, his end game, the big picture game is to 
destabilize and immobilize yeah. the yeah. body of believers. Yeah, because yeah, I think you've got two points there. The one of what it does to the individual, mm-hmm. and then two, what it does to the corporate body as a whole. And I think that's a thing that I don't want people to miss either, is that it like just it's almost just a full circle moment because you go right back to that first one, the feet stabilize the body. If we've got an immobile, crippled, bound foot, it's it's going to hurt the rest of the body, and its the body's not going to go where it needs to go. And I think that's God can do whatever He wants, whenever He wants. But I think He it, He's an amazing God because He wants the church to get involved in His work mm-hmm. of bringing the kingdom of light. Yeah. And there are a lot of times where we get in our own way because mm-hmm. we're crippled, we're bound, and we we're you know we're not we're listening to the enemy, and we're not listening to Jesus. And thus, and I love how you said, you know, Jesus came to bring life and life to the full back to the first of the, of the year. Right. Um, and I just, I really hope people take that, don't take, don't miss that point, mm-hmm. which I think it'll be hard to miss it because of that picture. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Honestly. It's pretty gross. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's funny because you were saying, talking little feet. Um, th- your daughter, Haven, mm-hmm. has literally w- one of the smallest feet. She does have very little well, feet. Two, two little, she has two little feet. Yeah. And it's funny because Sarah would get so frustrated because she wants to dress up Haven and have her have these cute shoes, especially when she started walking. Yeah. But she couldn't find any shoes right. that had the gr- walking grip. Right? right. Right. And it's just, that's who she is. Yep. Little yep. tiny feet. Now she's. She's still got her little feet, yep. but she's running around. Yeah, she's running around. So, yeah. um, so here's what we're going to do. Kay. We are going to take, uh, not, we're not going to take a break. We're going to get right into our story. So right. if, just a reminder, this is a way to tell people about how Central has made a difference in your life. Uh, we've got the FERT number one. If you haven't had a chance, check out the lobby if you're home at Central, if you're on site. Write down a couple sentences about how the church has made an impact in your life. Or yeah. we've still got that Facebook post, and I'm actually going to read a couple of those. Um, the Facebook post is really cool because just people telling their story and yeah. it, it it lets other people give encouragement and also just inspires them yeah. um, but the third way is to send your voice memo so it's super simple you bring up the voice memo on your phone and uh, then you send that you either text it to me if you got my number or you can email me jared at centralnow.com all the details are at centralnow.com slash podcast this podcast home site so we're going to listen to sure, yeah. if oh, you have we a, got six if you have an iphone an iphone it's actually called voice memo so just search voice memo right and so you just use that and if you uh-huh. don't have an iphone the first step is to go get an iphone the, the 15s are out <laughs> right <laughs> sorry, sorry carry on. second step so what we're going to do first we got uh, our six people uh, we we we. Uh, it's funny the couples kind of tag team here. You got Caitlin Lewis and then Clayton and Libby Reeves. I love them. Jody and Jared Poole. Awesome name. And then we're gonna wrap it up with Merle Metcalf. Oh, um, mm, Merle Metcalf. Okay. So what we're gonna do first? Uh, Caitlin Lewis and then Clayton and Libby Reeves, and then we'll be right back after them. So here is Caitlin Lewis. <laughs> God's timing is always perfect. That is a simple fact that I have always struggled with. A very wise doctor once told me, there's Caitlin's timing and there's God's timing, and they aren't the same thing. Trust God. My parents, younger sister, and I were led to Central Christian Church at what was probably the lowest point in our lives thus far. Within six months of my little brother's death, we found ourselves in the pews at Central. Growing up in a Lutheran church, Central was a really big change. I think we were initially drawn to Central because we felt that we could get lost amongst the crowd. And at that time, we were okay with that. Little did we know how wrong we were. The building, the pastors, the music, the people, all quickly became exactly what we needed, family. God knew that my family desperately needed the family of Central Christian Church. Fast forward a few years, and my husband Jeremy and I were married at Central. A few years after that, Jeremy went on a mission trip to Thailand, which led me to joining a small group with the people that he went on that trip with. I was part of that group when Jeremy and I's oldest child, Hank, was born 10 weeks early and spent the first 40 days of his life in the NICU. God's perfect timing put me with the most amazing group of God-fearing, praying women. Mamas themselves there to support me as I navigated life as a new mom with a medically fragile baby. Anyone that knows Hank today knows he's not little anymore. He's known as Hank the Tank, and I know in my heart, without a doubt, that the prayers of my central family got myself and Hank through what has probably been the scariest time of my life. My central family prayed with me, and most importantly, for me, when I couldn't find the words myself. 
I've called Central Christian Church home for almost 20 years now. In that time, I've transitioned from the sad 18-year-old looking to get lost in the crowd to the new wife, to the scared mama, to the perfectly imperfect Christian that I am today. This church family has been with me through being baptized, married, navigating life as a working mama and wife, teaching my children about Christ, and watching both of them be baptized, and everything in between. From Thanksgiving dinners to small groups, Sundays in the nursery, weekends with the media team, and goats in the Christmas program, watching my family and my children grow and flourish in God's love. I didn't do that. God's perfect timing did that. And in the process, He gave me the most amazing, loving, praying family of God-fearing people that any girl could ask for. So to answer your question, how has the Central Family made a difference in my life? I don't even want to think about how or who I'd be or where I'd be without my Central Family. They haven't made a difference in my life. They are the difference in my life. Hi everyone, we are Clayton and Libby Reeves and we are excited to tell you how the Central Family has made a difference in our lives. When we first walked through the doors of Central as a couple, we were in desperate need of friendships and companionship that would help us grow spiritually in the Lord. We just felt like we were in a dry season and we just wanted to be able to lean on others and we never did expect um, the outpouring of love that we did receive and that we have received and we wouldn't trade it for the world now. Yeah, the the place we are in now from where we were when we started um, is a total 180. The relationships, I know we talk about it all the time here at church, but the relationships really do matter most. And those relationships that we have made have led us closer um, with the Lord. And it has just been exciting, um, you know, starting a family at Central and... Um, it's just we are very excited to see where the Lord is taking this church and where the, he is taking us um, in our personal lives as well as our spiritual lives. And um, we're just so glad that we have found our central family. Absolutely. And there's never been a Sunday that someone hasn't greeted us with a warm smile and, you know, by name. And if you get to Central and you plug in and you really pour in, then there's just no doubt that it's going to change your life. You just have to get in and dive in. Anything else? I don't think so. All right. <laughs> all right. That was good. I mean, yeah, I love all those people. Caitlin Lewis, It's a lot of people might know the Rudolfskis, her parents. Right. Um, but Caitlin's always, she's a behind the scenes, she's quiet, but just raising these this family. Um, and I just love that she went through everything she's done, gone through as starting an 18-year-old girl. Yeah, Caitlin is, uh, I th- she's really a quiet leader. Uh, mm-hmm. I mean, think I don't know that people really uh, know what a good organizer and um, implementer she is. Yeah. Uh, she's, she's a really great leader, but uh, to her point, there's not really anything medically fragile about Hank now. Nope. You know I mean? He nope. is, I mean, it's just what a cool story yeah. uh, to see her um, be part of this church family. Yeah. And Libby and uh, Clayton, I, it's, it's, it's neat to see them have, how they've grown as a couple yeah. here. Um, and just again, how you can, so many people, how they're starting families and doing it the right way and, and, and central helps them. And then thus in turn, they help each other. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Just love them. I mean, Clayton yeah. and Libby are, uh, Summersville folk. They are. Mm-hmm. So I, I wasn't going to bring it up, but uh, <laughs> I do it for you. <laughs> no, but I mean, they're just, uh, they're the, the real deal. Yeah. And, um, both of them have uh, walked a lot of things, mm-hmm. uh, in, in life and um, I think their engagement with this church family yeah. um, has made a difference in their life and in turn other lives. Yeah, and I think you don't you, two people that just both have servant hearts uh-huh. uh, in in different ways too. It's neat to see how they get involved and how they really uh, bring so much to this central family. So, yeah. okay, so now we have another power couple, Jared and Jody Poole, and Jared oh. does spell his name the correct way: J A R E D. J E R O D. No, J A R E D. But I like the Poole's perspective, being from the Fairfield area. It's kind of neat to hear theirs too. So. Let's jump in. Here we go. Hi, this is Jared and Jody Poole. We have been attending Central Christian Church going on three years now. One Sunday, our hot water heater quit working, so I looked to see who had one, and there was one in Mount Vernon 45 minutes away. We had friends that attend Central, so we thought we'd just go to church with them and then go get a hot water heater. 
We were we were not looking for another church, but from the moment we walked in, we could feel the Holy Spirit. We were greeted at the door, went in and sat down for service, and oh my, we knew this was where God wanted our family to be. As for my part, I had grown up in our previous church. I had been baptized there and had a lot of memories. But like Jared said, from the moment we walked in, we could feel God's presence. We had gone through a lot in the months leading up to that, and we were all hurting. That morning, we all cried. I was feeling comforted. I finally felt that God hadn't forsaken me, that he was walking through it all with me, even when I didn't feel him. That evening was a worship night, and so we came back, and again, we felt the presence of God. We knew that that God was calling us to this place, that he needed to get us out of our comfort zone and wanted to refine us and and use us. Central's a big church, but once you get plugged in and volunteer and join small groups, it seems small. Uh, relationships that are formed here, you feel like family. Uh, since coming to Central, I feel like God's called me to serve and step out of my comfort zone. Uh, I volunteer on the greet team and with several of the events through the year. The girls and I serve in the nursery, and Jared and I have been a part of small groups for the past several sessions. And our three children are involved with Fusion. Uh, we wish we lived a little bit closer so that we could be here for more of the events the church has to offer. Central truly has blessed our family in so many ways. One of the greatest moments was to watch our son get baptized through one of the many programs for the kids. The relationships that are formed through the church, our faith through the messages by John, Hayden, Trevor, James, and Jared, and how to worship by Eric, Brooke, and the worship team, we truly feel loved. How has being a part of Central's church body made a difference in my life? I walked away, no, ran away from God in the early 1970s after basically being a prodigal for more than 45 years, I came to Central the Sunday after Easter 2022. Sitting in the back row on the lower section on Friday evenings and Sundays at 11 a.m., I enjoyed singing along to all the beautiful songs, even though I'm not a good singer and I sing loud. I met a few people, John, of course, wonderful Pat Vore, and a few others who sat near me. I signed up for the fall rooted group last September, figuring that I would meet some new people. That group, the Berries, Pools, Hermans, and Clevis, are still some of my best central friends. On fall serve day, I worked with Lumberjack, Berry, and the rest of my group to clear a brush pile from someone's backyard. Camaraderie at its best. I also met more friends during winter group. I attended my first prom ever in my life when I volunteered for the special needs prom last October. What a great time. When I volunteered for Christmas at Central, I passed out candles at the center tunnel door, working with some great partners each night, and also getting to kid around with the many guests and their kids as they went to the worship center. In my earlier life, I thought I was an introvert, but I worked all four nights and had a blast every night. On the suggestion of Jason Berry and some others, I began volunteering for guest services in January, and I love it. I do it every week. I just worked my first Kid Depot shift on September 17th and can't wait to work many more. So, how has it been part of Central's church body made a difference in my life. Well, it's hard to say. I love that man. Yeah. Hard to say. I love that's how he ends it too, yeah. because he said all these things, but he knows it's not enough of to express what his heart feels. He's one of those guys where, I mean, he just, 
oozes authenticity. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. In the context of talking about the foot, the word oozes might have been a gross <laughs> word to say. <laughs> Those were explicit words on um, this episode. Yeah, no, but I mean, he like he. This is this is just Merle. You know, he's mm-hmm. a kind, soft spoken. Yep. Talk to anybody. Yep. Do whatever you need him to do. Mm-hmm. Um, be there when he needs to be there. Yep. Kind of a kind of a dude. And going back to Jared and Jody as mm-hmm. well. What a cool um, what a cool story of somebody connecting with this ministry from forty five minutes mm-hmm. away. And like other people who are driving from that same yeah. neck of the woods and, yep. and that same kind of a radius, um, I just uh, I think it's just really neat to know that God has connected with people like Jared and Jody and their mm-hmm. family. Um, and I, I mean, there was a time before I really knew Jared. Mm-hmm. Somebody told me he was from Fairfield, and I didn't believe it mm-hmm. because he was here so often. He was here yeah. So often. yeah. And I thought, nah. And I went and asked them. Mm-hmm. And show enough, mm-hmm. and it's just really, uh, really neat to see. Yeah. I really appreciate them. Yeah, the salt of the earth people, um, and just do anything, be there for you. Um, and I and I love that they're a part of this family too. And the mean, if your hot water heater goes out, you you got to come to church. I right. think that's, sure. that's the lesson. That's the story. Here's something that is neat to hear from these stories for the last three weeks. A lot of people when I because I I've solicited these. You've asked me. I you know text a couple people and mm-hmm. and they've shared their story and. Um, I, I can just, I picture them, uh, writing this out, um, and, you know, going over it. And I, I love that. I love mm. people just thinking and taking the moment to be very intentional about uh-huh. how this church has made a difference in yeah. their lives. And, I, and there's something, a common thing with every single one is they list where they're serving. Um, and I want to get, I want to talk yep. about that yep. because yep. It, it, and it, they're, they're not doing that to say, look at me, pat me on the back, give me my gold star. Yep. They're saying that because that's part of their identity as a person in yep. this church. Um, and I think that's just a natural uh, outcome of when you get involved with that becomes your identity of who you are. I'm somebody that serves with kids. I'm somebody that's in the creative arts department. I'm on the worship team. That becomes your identity because that's what you're created to do. Yeah. So yeah, super good. So if you again want to send me yours voice memo on Apple phones, I don't know Android phones, um, and then Jared at centralnow.com spelled correctly J A R E D at centralnow.com. Love to hear yours uh, and make that part of the central weekly. <laughs> um, I love how Merle said this was his first prom ever last yeah. year when he served. Yeah, this is super cool. Um, and. I think that's a good segue that there we have a hundred volunteers signed up for prom. Do we really? That's not enough. Oh, that's the most we've had at this time leading up. What? Uh, what? Twenty some days right. out. But so because I think people know how awesome our prom is, mm-hmm. um, and we just if you want to uh, find out centralnow.com slash prom. Uh, Shay and her team are putting that together, and I'm just we're almost growing out of this building uh, because we have so many people that are in this in this room just sharing the love of God and and doing this to us set of people that maybe the world doesn't look after very well anymore. Yeah, um, yeah. And we, the church body, can do a great job of loving them. So yeah. yep. central natal love, love it. Now, episode 83 next week, uh-huh. we're talking about mouth. Oh. Right? Oh, yeah. That's what... <laughs> Encouragement, uh-huh. which this is going to be a good sermon because mm-hmm. you're Mr. Encouragement. Uh, like, I don't know about that. That's part of your who J- John Henninger is. Your DNA is encouraged. I think we're going to I'm going to try and figure out a way to do four for four in the sermon Ooh, somehow. I, I don't like know that. how to Every, do it. Four different people, four different sermons. I don't know. Yeah, we're, we're going to find out. So I think you got to do that. Yeah, we'll find out. So if maybe we can collect their name at the door. Put them on the roulette thing. And the wheel, right? (laughs) Yeah, we'll explain that more next week. But seriously, check in. uh, Make sure you're watching. If you missed an episode of The Central Weekly, go back. But more importantly, if you missed a lesson in this body of believers, go back, listen to that. It's on the app. It's on our YouTube page. And share those with people. Maybe somebody is not in a church family and they need to be with them because they want to have life and life to the fullest. That's done in Jesus Christ and in his church. And you were made to be part of the body of believers. Nice. That's it. Okay. See you. Good transition. Bye. Bye, guys.